And now, our feature presentation. Hello, it's me, the Sterninator, and as many of you may know... Halloween is coming real quick! And in honor of that, I've drank in this really weird green goo that I found in my basement. Shouldn't have any negative si Um... Oh. Well, that's different, but regardless, I'm the Sterninator, and welcome to the channel. Let's hop right on into it. Today, we're gonna be looking at universal monsters. Those are things such as the Invisible Man, Frankenstein, Dracula, the Mummy, all as you know them, turned into Pokemon. You see, every year around this time, I start to look at all of these older movies and I run through them. I watch Frankenstein, I watch The Wolfman, I watch all of them. Invisible Man happens to be my favorite. And I figure if I'm doing this every year, as well as drawing these Pokemon for you guys, why not let you in on this pastime? We're gonna start with one of my latest favorites, which is of course the mummy, Imhotep himself. And I wanted to figure out a way to do this with a two stage line. So we start off and I wanted to get some of that Egyptian type of look and vibe to it a little bit while still keeping that mummy aspect. And true, there have been some very negative versions of the mummy. I still thought that Imhotep deserved a chance on this list, and so here we go. There were a couple different versions that I could go with and that I played with and thought about, and you'll see those as we continue on through this video today, that I kind of didn't know what direction to go. But I decided to kind of go with this almost tendrily snake-like vibe. It's kind of hidden in this version here, but you'll notice that the body itself has almost this snake-like body with the loose wrappings kind of functioning almost as faux legs. The concept I wanted to go with was almost kind of tricking the audience, making you believe this might turn into something else. Because for me, at least as a person who played video games and Pokemon specifically back before the internet, I know, I'm old, but I was always surprised. I love just being excited by what the Pokemon would turn into and seeing that it wasn't what I anticipated. For example, one of my favorite Pokemon was Loudred in the early generations. I started playing in Pokemon Red, but Loudred in later games was my absolute favorite. Loved the guy, thought it was amazing, and then I heard pray tell from friends on the blacktop that it evolved, and I was even more blown away. It didn't look like anything that I thought Loudred would evolve into with Exploud, but I still liked it. It wasn't my favorite design, but it was so different than what I anticipated that I found myself really attached to it either way. And still to this day, Loudred, Exploud, some of my favorite Pokemon. So I wanted to kind of go with that, make something that felt like it could surprise you with its evolution. So I put little hints here and there, the fact that it has this kind of snake-like, lizard-like tail and the legs are kind of just fake faux legs. But the rest, I wanted to really stick to the mummy vibe. In ancient Egypt, it was known that the different groups were kind of governed by different symbology. Some governed by birds, some governed by snakes. And that's where you get pharaohs who have one or the other as the crest on their forehead. So I wanted to incorporate some of that feature here. It has almost these wing-like arms that kind of flow and are wrapped so you don't truly know what the Pokemon looks like. And then it has this snake-like body. Will it become a bird? Will it become a plane? No, it will become Superman. I, no, it, I feel really bad about making that joke. That was a bad joke. Don't, please disregard. Don't go down in the comments. But yeah, I, I wanted it to be kind of this mysterious and mystiqued Pokemon that kind of is in the same vein as things like Mimikyu or Shedinja when you kind of look in its back type of thing. I, I'm kind of rambling on and going nuts on this whole concept. You get it. It's a mummy. It's wrapped up. You don't truly know what's hidden beneath those wrappings. And so I give you this. Otep, the ground ghost type Pokemon. The name is a play on Imhotep, the name of the original mummy in the first Universal series. And for the shiny, I went with this more ghostly, purpley type of hue. He's still kind of a little guy, but he's gonna grow. So let me know down in the comments what abilities you think this guy should have. Moving on, I did not know where I wanted to go with this. I had so many ideas that suddenly got kind of just thrown out the window because I was so just not knowing where I wanted to go. You see, the thing about the mummy 
is it has tremendous power, probably one of the most powerful creatures in the entire monster universe. Able to command sands, able to command earthquakes and bugs and snakes and creatures of that ilk. It has a full command over these things because the lore of it is that it is a descendant of the very gods of Egypt themselves. And so, what do I do with that? I, I went a number of directions, as you kind of saw, deciding whether I wanted to go with this kind of big, gaping mouth, or this like puppety type of look, and I ended up going more closely with what I had before. For a little while, I felt kind of bad about it. I thought, this isn't exciting, this isn't something new and vibrant, but eventually, I started playing with it more and looking at what opportunities were presented by the previous form, and I'm pretty happy with what turns out. I ended up just kind of unwrapping that snake-like look, kind of infiltrating more with that snake-type energy while still keeping a lot of the body. It's almost like it's become more unwrapped as it's evolved. I also wanted to play with the eyes. Generation 3 in Pokemon did a lot to play with how eyes are structured in Pokemon. I look at Pokemon like Wingle and Pelipper and the shape of their eyes and how it's so different from anything we'd seen prior and yet still works. And so I kind of tried to play with that here. Gave it these wrappings that are now way, way, way more like just loose and long and just looping all over the ground. So that was a ton of fun. I think that idea of this thing in movement of kind of slithering on its tail while having these tendrilled wrappings kind of behind it. I think that's a really cool type of visual. So I, I went with that. And that's something that I've kind of learned while drawing these things is you have to kind of think about it in action. What is it gonna look like as it moves? What's it gonna look like as it attacks? What's it gonna look like when it's happy and sad and kind of taking those things into account. True in these drawings, I'm not going into that aspect. Maybe I will at some point, but for this moment, I just have to keep those things in mind. So I went with something that felt kind of flowy, something that felt energetic. I also expanded that wrapping around the neck that was previously this small little collar like the kinds that servants would wear in Egypt into more of a pharaoh type garb. I wanted so desperately to stay away from other Egyptian styled Pokemon that we have like Cafagragus and Lucario and others of the same type of build. How do I do that? Those ones already really well capture what the Egyptian vibe of Pokemon's gonna be. Despite the fact that we have not yet gotten an Egyptian region, Pokemon Company, Game Freak, where are you at? Like, you know, I mean, everything's there. You don't even have to do a ton of work. But regardless, um, I, I wanted to capture some of those energies without just redoing the same type of designs as Cafagrigus and Lucario and other Pokemon that are kind of Egypt adjacent. So I went with kind of this collar and I think it works. It brings in some of the color and some of that energy without just fully overtaking the design. And it's also something that we haven't seen a ton of in Pokemon already. I'm curious what you guys think the relationship between this guy and Cafagrigus would be. As usual, I don't do abilities in these videos because I'm so curious what you guys think. That's not my forte, so let me know down in the comments. What abilities would the Pokemon seen in this video have? What relationships would they have to other Pokemon? I think this guy and Cafagrigus would either be best friends or absolutely hated enemies. So let me know, kind of like a poll down in the comments. Some of you are gonna think, oh, they'd be friends. Some of you are gonna think they are going to hate each other. Maybe this guy's the main food source of Cafagrigus in that that coffin opens up and it just swallows these guys whole. Maybe there's a connection back, way back in the ancient Egypt Pokemon region that doesn't exist, but 100% should. I've been griping and complaining about that a lot, so let's just go on into the details of this guy here. Ferrotep. Ferrotep is a play on the terms Pharaoh and Imhotep, which is again the name of the original mummy. For the shiny, has this mystical type of vibe to it. He gets a lot bigger as he's grown now, and I can't even imagine how long he is when that snake body unravels. So yeah, this is our mummy. Moving on, let's hop into our Wolfman. The Wolfman is a really interesting character to kind of look at. He's one of the few characters not played by Boris Karloff in the original Universal movies. He's in fact played by Lon Chaney Jr., playing the character of Lawrence Talbot, who comes under the Werewolf's Curse. Mummy's Curse, Werewolf's Curse. We got a lot of curses kind of going on today. I hope I don't get flagged for that. But 
yeah, really cool concept. One that is so cool that Pokemon has actually already tackled it with uh, Rockruff and the whole lichen type line. So I had to kind of go a different direction. How do I capture that same type of Pokemon inspiration without just redoing what's already been done? I, I, I didn't realize that until already starting out this video. But yeah, that was, that ended up being kind of a rough one. As I was drawing, I kind of had that in mind. Like I gotta keep away from Rockruff, but this does still have to be a wolf. So I kind of just ended up letting loose saying, okay, well let's make something fun and just kind of hope, you know? I don't want to be kind of distilled down by what already exists. I'm doing this because it's fun. I'm doing this because it's a creative outlet. And so I went with that. I decided for the look, I wanted this thing to feel just ragged. I wanted it to have tufts of hair that are sticky and stuck together and just kind of all over the place. Whereas Rockruff is kind of well put together and just smooth, I guess is the best way to put it. This one's gonna be absolutely fluffy. Also cute and fluffy. I wanted it to feel like a wild animal at the same time. So I went with kind of this torn up mask type of look, these fluffy ears, this coat that kind of rides over the rest of the body. That was kind of an inspiration with the challenge of the Wolfman itself, being that it is a character hidden within another character, the wolf hidden within the body of a man. I wanted it to feel almost like this wolfy exterior that made it so big and gruff and mean looking was kind of just this overcoat thrown over a different Pokemon. Kind of like we did with our mummy Pokemon, it's almost like a lot of these designs have something hidden besides what they truly are. And I think that that is kind of the essence of what makes a monster a monster. It's usually not what's in plain sight, but what hides just below the surface. It's why movies like Alien work really well, never really showing what it looks like. Or Jaws, not really getting a full glimpse at the shark until it's absolutely needed. That's what makes these movies so good, is your imagination is free to run wild. I think it's why so many people like Pokemon like Mimikyu as well. The idea of there's a different Pokemon here and it just looks like something else is fascinating. So I kind of utilize that for both this design and its evolution, creating the concept that it is wearing something to disguise what it truly does look like. However, with this design, I wanted it to blend a little bit more smoothly where it's kind of that Easter egg that's hidden within the design itself. You have to kind of look to realize, oh wait, there is something else going on here. This is a different type of coat on this Pokemon. And so we have Loop Up. Loop Up is a play on Lycanthropy, Lupin, and Puppy. So it has that. It's a dark type, which I know we already have a dark type with a rock rough evolution, but I thought it was fun. I thought there's not much else that goes with it. Maybe I could go psychic or normal or fairy to give it that moon type of element, but you'll see what we're going for in this next form. I think it would be a lot of fun to have a certain evolutional criteria met in order to get this guy to evolve. And I think you'll see why here in a moment, but let me know down in the comments what you think. What should be the exciting and different form to make this evolve? Again, we already have evolving at night. We already have evolving at day, evolving at other times and things like that. Give me something exciting. I always am blown away by what you guys are able to come up with. But for this design, which I'm sure you're already like, wait, what, what's happening? Hold on. While looking at just the sketch, I wanted something that felt more man-ish. In the last form, we went very puppy, very wolf. But here, I wanted a mix of both. And I wanted to keep that idea that there is something else going on here. That there is a coat or a second skin being worn by this Pokemon. So you can see that it has almost this coat type of vibe to it. It has almost like it's wearing something else over what the actual Pokemon is, including down to the teeth, which I kind of did as almost the faux teeth of the lips over the real teeth of what's underneath. There's a lot of dual proponents to this Pokemon that I think are really cool, a lot of layers. So he has the layers of the wraparound from the ear fur that we saw in the previous form kind of expanded on. He has almost this trench coat style like fur that goes over the body. Even the hands themselves look like they're torn up or gloves. So yeah, it, it was an idea that I came up with that I thought I have to move away from the rock rough line, get something very different here. And I think I did. I'm really happy with the direction that I ended up going. One of my few animalistic designs too, where I didn't do the backwards dog leg that we see in a lot of other designs, 
out of mine, kind of a default for animalistic. I actually went with more human styled legs, which is awkward, off-putting, terrifying, some might even say, but I think it really works here. It is very off-putting, the fact that it has real people type of calves and thighs, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was just one more opportunity for me to fit in that man part of the wolf man energy. I just really like it. Everything about it feels like it's a mask, like it's hiding something else. Even the face expanding what was just kind of a domino mask in the previous form into this cowl for the head that wraps up and over the back into the darker fur of the trench coat. And it feels almost like it's a, uh, what is the term? What am I thinking of? What am I looking for? It is, a, it is a pelt. He's wearing a pelt of a wolf over whatever it is that he happens to be underneath. Utilizing the different colors and gradients to better hide and camouflage what this Pokemon truly is. It's a wolfman after all. And I kept trying to figure out how do I showcase the idea that this thing kind of like tears off its skin to reveal its true self. That's very spooky. That's very not Pokemon. That's very dark. <laughs> and so I, I rubbed my temples for a long time trying to figure out what to do with that. Unfortunately, I ran into that question when I was midway through the previous form and just had to kind of stick with it. So let me know. This, this actually ended up being one of my favorites of this episode today was this design. It was something I didn't know what I was gonna do with, didn't know how to handle the prompt, but ended up kind of just working out in a way that I think is positive. And yeah, I can call this one of my favorites. Lycanite, the dark Pokemon. It is a dark type Pokemon. That shiny just blows me away. I freaking love that thing. It looks so ragged and ravenous and frenzied. It looks almost zombified. And the colors of the main look too have that kind of moony type of deep, dark, light, purple motif going on that I really, really enjoy. Moving on, I'm gonna hit up one of my favorite monsters from the Universal series, which is Frankenstein. I figured there were some easy paths that I could take with this thing, but every time that I thought about what I wanted to do, I felt like there was a Pokemon that either I'd already created or is canon to the franchise that really fits the niche already. If you've been watching our ARG series, which I drop every Monday, you'll know that I did a variation on Goldark for that series that is heavily inspired by Frankenstein, as well as things like nuclear power. And I had to hold myself back from just kind of doing that again. So I played around with the idea of what if he's just a little guy? What if he's just a little like component to a larger Frankensteinian style monster? And I created this piece that is kind of just this metal bearing to it. I don't know what shape this was. It just kind of worked out. And I, I think that a lot of more of it makes sense as we see it kind of transition and evolve. But for the moment, it's just this little stumpy dude, which is kind of almost looks mad to be alive. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like that really is Frankenstein in a nutshell. Oh, maybe that's why the design was like this. Maybe it's literally Frankenstein in Frankenstein in a nutshell. Uh, but I gave it also these little like little grabby arms and I gave it this like nodes on its forehead, which kind of insinuate the idea of the Frankenstein bolts that became famous with Boris Karloff's creation of it, not creation, but his portrayal of the character. And yeah, I wanted to incorporate that in some way because I feel like that's what separates this version of Frankenstein, the universal version from other forms. The things that make Frankenstein famous, the flat head, the nodes sticking out of the neck, kind of the green skin, all came from Boris Karloff and Universal's initial infiltration into the story. They created these elements and they've kind of stuck around. So I knew that I had to take advantage of some of those aspects without just making Frankenstein and calling it a Pokemon, calling it a day. I went with using the flat topped style head, using the nodes that are normally on the neck, putting those on the forehead to kind of make these arms just a little bit more fantastical rather than coming out of where they're meant to on the body, they come out of the forehead. Kind of also incorporating the idea of Frankenstein is not the monster, Frankenstein is the man. And insin insinuating that as well. So I put that in there with the idea that these nodes come from the head, with the idea of a mad scientist and the idea of kind of almost bringing the lab of Dr. Frankenstein to life. That was kind of what I ended up going with with a lot of this stuff, both this form and the form after, was giving life to something that previously didn't. 
which again, not to drop the ARG stuff, but that's a big proponent of what's happening currently in that mystery is creating life out of what previously didn't and how Pokemon are manufactured. We have a lot of man-made Pokemon. So what happens when that goes a little bit more awry? So yeah, that, that not to not to advertise my other episodes and other series, but it's weird how much those things kind of tend to go hand in hand. So meet Boltawatt. Boltawatt is of course steel electric type. As much as I played around with other concepts, I couldn't move past Frankenstein or Frankenstein inspired Pokemon being steel and electric type. I could have gone ghost, I guess. I could have maybe gone ground with the whole idea of it being dug up from salvaged bodies, but electric and steel just felt like it kind of worked. Moving on, I think that we're gonna see a lot more of that come into play with its evolution. And one of my favorite designs that I think I've done, I really just kind of love these big, bulky Pokemon. Like I said, I worked with the Golurk, turning it into Glowlurk for the ARG videos. And man, that was a ton of fun. And Golurk is one of my favorite designs. Just feels perfect, nice and big and round and automatous. But I kind of wanted to capture that same energy without just recreating Golurk again. I already kind of did that. So yeah, moving on. I, I wanted to figure out a way to capture that energy without just mimicking it. So I wanted to make a Frankenstein that felt like a Frankenstein, but wasn't just Frankenstein drawn as a Pokemon, which I guess is the prompt now that I think about it. I ended up fighting myself a lot on this design, actually. I think I wanted something different. I wanted something that kind of inspired uh, Pokemon like Metagross, which is again, one of my favorite Pokemon. So I went with something that was like building upon what previously existed, not in a way of like expanding on it or evolving on it, but in a way of literally let's get several of these guys and push them together. So if you can see in the sketch there, the arms that I ended up doing are actually the same structure as the base body from the previous form. The only new things that have been added are kind of the attachment to the top and the arms. I wanted to bring in some new elements, but I wanted to keep those older elements there as well. So I, I think it ended up striking a pretty good balance. And like I said, I wanted this to be almost like Dr. Frankenstein's lab come to life. So it has all of this almost construction style energy to it, that it is the rods, it is the nodes, it is the electrical conduits, it is the metal of the lab all compiled together into this monstrosity. I also wanted to move with a little bit more uh, asymmetry. So I added that crack that has kind of become symbolic of this Pokemon that is referenced in like the shape of the clasping headpieces into this energy type of line work. So you'll see it on the body, you see it on the arms, that zigzag style. I also wanted to incorporate it because it's very reminiscent of a heartbeat monitor, which if this is a Pokemon about creating life, it should have some emphasis on those aspects as well. So some of the things that I brought into play with this design, just to kind of list them out, of course, we wanna make it look like the previous form. We wanna make it look like it is built upon itself, inspired by Frankenstein, inspired by Frankenstein's lab. And of course, bringing in some aspects of real world technology into that, such as a heartbeat monitor and these electrical nodes that are now sticking out kind of all over. Something that I've done on this design that I haven't really done before, and I think it worked out really well, was I added these little scratch marks, these little tiny lines that indicate wear and tear across the body of this. And I really, really like how it turned out. I think it gives it a texture that I haven't had in a lot of my drawings before that allows it to feel like metal, but still allows it to feel kind of natural. So I, I just, it was something I experimented with in this drawing that I really, really like. Again, just adding some extra dimension and texture. So I'm probably gonna do that in a lot more stuff. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this a trick? Is this a motif that you feel like, man, that really works to add something to this? Or am I just really empathetic to my own drawings? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, let me know what abilities you think these Pokemon should have. Whether it be ones that you yourself make up or ones that already exist, I'm the artist, I am not the strategist. So that type of stuff, when you guys come up with it, it's amazing. When I come up with it, it is 
Cockapoopoo. I am not good at it, so please help me, I beg of you. But for the moment, let's take a look at what we have with this guy. This is Voltagrim. Voltagrim is still our electric steel type. For the shiny, we really have that purple type of energy, which is just so cool. I don't really have an explanation for why it's cool or why it would be included as the shiny as a reference to anything. It's just cool, and I think that's reason enough. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this guy. Let me know what you think in the comments about all of the Pokemon that we worked on today. If you like this series, let me know, and I'll continue with more Pokemon based on Universal Monsters. And trust me, there are a lot of Universal Monsters. There's a lot of stuff to get through. So with that said, join me down in the Discord so you can be a part of the conversation as we have it, and I will see you in the next one. Sounds like you know where to find me. Bye.